Welcome back everyone. Today is Friday, January 3rd, 2025, and my name is Perry. If you're new around here, this is a scow bow mini cruiser sailboat that I'm building. It is constructed of PVC foam core between fiberglass skins. This is the foam sandwich construction method. Basically, my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable 14-foot sailboat that's watertight and custom built to cross oceans. Now, in this video, I plan to assemble my cassette rudder case and tiller. And let me show off the pieces that I've made already. I picked up some plywood that measured 4.5 millimeters thick. And so I've got six pieces of that, three for one side of the tiller and three for the other side of the tiller. And then three pieces of nine millimeter plywood sandwiched together to make the spacer between the two sides of the rudder box. And then I call these the stringers for the port side and the starboard side of that rudder box. And then in the center here, I've got a spacer that'll go between the tiller about a third of the way back from where the rudder ends on it. This plywood was courtesy of a small business owner I met named Ben, a sailing friend. So thanks very much, Ben, for the plywood. And this is a Baltic birch plywood. And I also owe a big thank you to whoever sent me a large flexible solar panel. I'll use this uh, just forward of the doghouse on my deck. I think it'll fit perfectly there. So uh, I didn't get a note with it, but if you sent it, thank you very much. Now you might be wondering what is a cassette rudder or why did I choose this rudder? In one of my very early videos when I was talking about rudders, a commenter told me about cassette rudders and I hadn't heard of them, but it's a very cool concept. You have a, a rudder box or case and it's open on the back and then the rudder blade just slides right in and is typically held on with bungees. Now, if you strike something in the water, usually the rudder blade will just move back a bit, absorb the blow through the bungee cords, and then it'll move back into position. Or if you hit something really hard, it may break the bungee cords off, but your rudder will uh, still be trailing in the water behind through a leash that you tie to the boat. So you don't lose your rudder, you can just reinsert it. Or it could be easy to make a spare rudder blade and keep on or in the boat. If you do snap that rudder blade, it's super easy to replace it even at sea. So I thought this was a really genius system. And yes, I'm aware that there are other kinds of kickback rudders on hinges and such, but I just really admired these cassette rudders and I wanted to try it out. The beauty of making these things that aren't permanently attached to the boat is it's very easy to make spares or if you break them or screw up in the building, it's very easy to just switch out parts. So I like that about this. Earlier, I added four more pieces of carbon fiber to each side of the pad eyes that I made on the buoyancy arch. And this is for the attachment of the main sheet. I'm really excited about these pad eyes. They're super strong. They've got a G10 plate inside that I fabricated, held in with four bolts. And the bolts don't just go into the PVC foam, they go into a 3 8 inch hole that I drilled, filled with thickened epoxy. Now, one square inch of this PVC structural foam has a compressive strength of 90 pounds. So with four bolts in each side, you've probably got about 360 pounds of holding power there not even including the epoxy that's on the side of that G10 plate holding it to the side. And then on top of that, you've got carbon fiber going around the outside of that G10 bracket onto the back of the arch and on the inside of it onto the leading edge of that buoyancy arch. And then of course later I've got to cover the entire horizontal wing of that buoyancy arch with more carbon fiber. So the load of the sail is spread to the port and starboard main sheet attachment points and all that carbon fiber on there works to spread the load evenly across the whole arch and down into the boat. So I think that's a robust, really great system for attaching the main sheet. So let's go ahead and get these parts assembled. Oh, but before we do that, if you are new here, please do make sure you subscribe. Help me grow the channel. All right, let's get to work.
Oh, look what's just arrived. I know what this is. Okay, let's open this up. This is pretty exciting for me because since I started this channel about three years ago, I have always been hoping for a lithium battery sponsorship. And finally, these guys were nice enough to reach out to me at Power Queen and send me a lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's see. Nice documents here and a quick start guide. Post bolts here. Oh, good packaging. Yeah. Oh, there it is. actually not too heavy. So this is a lithium iron phosphate battery or LIFEPO4. And a couple quick benefits about this. This is not the kind of lithium battery you hear about catching on fire on airplanes or banned from travel. Those contain cobalt and this contains no cobalt. Now from what I've been reading they're considered incombustible so they won't catch on fire when exposed to fire nor uh, when rapid charging takes place or a short circuit of some kind or, or a rapid discharge of power you have. A couple more benefits are it doesn't require maintenance of adding water like a lead acid typically will and doesn't require ventilation like they do. And of course those batteries are very inefficient at being charged. You have to supply a lot more power to them to get a full charge. And then when discharging using the battery, it's also much more inefficient using like your typical lead acid battery. So where you might require two lead acid batteries for your purposes, a lithium might get the job done with only one. Probably coming up here in the spring, I'll do a battery install and the rest of my electrical system. I'm kind of a newbie at installing all those things, but we'll go through and learn it. And I uh, look forward to showing this off again when installing it later on in the spring. So a real big thank you to Power Queen for sending me the battery. They've got some very competitive looking prices on their lithium ion phosphate batteries. So take a look if you're interested. Thanks again. Well, there it is. That went pretty well. There's some things that were a bit misaligned and I just have to fix it by sanding. That's not a big issue. If I could do it again, I would have done the cassette box first. And then another day, maybe do the tiller because it was a bit too much to do it all at once, but it worked out. Oh, and by the way, check out my new secondhand table saw. I've always wanted one, but we've always been moving so much. I never got one, but now that we're buying this place, I went ahead and got one. That is sanded up and looking pretty. The handhold on the tiller end feels good, rounded edges here. And I've got a hole here because I'm gonna place a cam cleat there. I'll have a thin line like this coming from the wind vane. And the way you'll lock in the course will be to pop it right into there. And then I need one on the other side as well and the other line will pass through here going to the other side. And I've got a hole drilled here and down here, four through bolts that'll strengthen this up. And then I've got to fit on these strong pintles. All right, I've made a couple little spacers and these will go like this, one here and one up here. And pintle will go over that and so this still has a little space more than I expected so I'm going to do some laminations of fiberglass over this and that'll strengthen this up as well but it'll also add thickness so that that uh, pintle is a good fit. All right there we go I got six layers on there hopefully that gives me the thickness I need let's see how it looks tomorrow.
about four hours before I did this lamination. I laid this piece up like this and I did kind of a pool of epoxy inside here. There you can kind of see just to waterproof that uh, spacer down there. And then I also put masking tape here where the two tiller pieces come together. And I just did a little pool of epoxy in there to seal up that crack. And I also filled with epoxy the two holes for the through bolts here and up here. And this is the bolt that has to go through them. So I got to re-drill that. Now check it out, we've successfully closed up that big gap we had before and in the process really strengthened up this uh, cassette rudder box here. This is so thick, I think I'm going to switch to the multi-tool. I decided to change up the color scheme of the tiller and the cassette rudder box for more contrast. I'm going to make it navy blue and then in the middle on the cassette rudder box I'm going to add a vinyl high-vis yellow sticker. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this time. Tomorrow morning, I'm heading down to a lawyer's office, and I'm going to sign the closing documents on this house, so I'm pretty excited about that. A big thank you to my Patreon members. Pretty much all my supplies these days for the boat come from the money from Patreon, so if you want to help out the project, that's a great place to start. But if nothing else, hey, leave a friendly comment, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one. Support on us to make all preparations for getting underway. Hey, uh, what's that? Home. Uh, um. uh, Public, get back to your station or I'll have you shot from your stairs. Uh, well, shoot, suck! Uh,